glad you're here. Wait, you threw me off. Now I got to start all over. Welcome to Crossroads. I'm Pastor Steve. No, uh, in the back, and, and so when Daniel's done talking, you can put a love offering in there, um, and he asks that the, if you write a check that you write it to Crossroads, we'll filter it through and give him one check at the end. Um, if you want to give cash, it'll be the same process, so Daniel gets one check uh, that goes back with him, or I think we just give directly to your ministry. And so um, with that, uh, we also today after the service, we have a new members class. If you're interested in what membership at Crossroads looks like, why do we do membership, any of that? interested about Crossroads just as a whole, please plan on sticking around. You can attend the mem new members class. If you attend the class, it doesn't mean you're a member. It's just like going to McDonald's. It doesn't mean you're a Big Mac. You just stick around. You can find out more about what the church is, who we are, how we started, where we're going, and all that stuff. That's today immediately following this, on the service. Wednesday, uh, for Wednesday's Crossroads Unplugged, we have a special guest preacher and a special guest worship leader. I'm not going to tell you who they are because you may not show up. Um, but especially for the worship part. Uh, anyway, uh, no, no, it's going to be awesome. I, I highly encourage everybody to come. Uh, one of the reasons we do Crossroads Unplugged is an opportunity for folks that are called to pastor or called to lead in, in, in some capacity. It opens the door for them to do that and start developing that call. Um, and that's going to start happening this Wednesday. So hopefully uh, you can make it. It's Wednesday at 6 o'clock here at church. October 29th, next week, is the final baptism of 2017. If you want or need to get baptized, contact me soon, and we'll get you on the list to do that for next week. October 31st, the annual harvest party. We still have a, a candy drop in the back. We still need candy. Uh, whatever's left over from that goes home with me, so please just load it up. Just keep it going. No, they, they, we, we, we give out, I don't know how many pounds, hundreds and hundreds of pounds of candy every year to the neighborhood kids, and it's awesome because they go home with other people, and, and it's great to fill them up with candy. So that's in the back. We will do a brief a volunteer meeting after the service next week. We were going to do it this week, but the new members class got bumped back. So we'll do a brief volunteer uh, meeting after the service next week. We'll tear these chairs down and get everything, start getting everything set up, and that'll take place over the course of a couple days. November 18th is the all-church Thanksgiving dinner. Sign up in the back. That's back there. If you will. Even if you're not bringing anything, just come and, and bring an appetite. If you can bring something, there's a sign-up list there, but we do want to get a head count. So if you're planning on coming to that, sign up. As many guests as you want, um, bring them in, and we'll feed them. Uh, December 9th is our Christmas talent extravaganza. Somebody mistakenly called this a talent show. I don't know what they were thinking. This is a talent extravaganza. If you've never been to this, I encourage you, it's December 9th, and if you've got any kind of talent with play spoons or what, sign up and do it. We, we, it's, it's an awesome opportunity to come together as the body of Christ, and we have a blast with that. Um, we have one uh, extra help needed request. Uh, for those of you who know Brad and Jamie Holly, Brad is not doing real well. Uh, his back, is, he's had back problems for a long time, but it's starting to give way. He needs a, um, what do they call it, a, a, a ramp built up to his house, and he needs some patchwork done on his roof. Uh, we need some volunteers to help with that. So if that's you, if you can do that, uh, contact me or Bill Rood, and we'll get a group set up to go out and try to help out with that. With that, as the men come forward to receive this morning's tithes and offerings, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Father, Lord, what a, what a blessing and a gift it is to be here, uh, to be freely able to come together as a group of believers and worship and praise you, uh, Lord, and, and hear of the true hope that comes through Jesus Christ. Lord, we, as we make these investments in your kingdom, God, I pray that you would utilize these uh, offerings, these gifts, to build up the body of believers here, but also to reach those who are lost. Uh, Lord, that, that these offerings would go to expanding your kingdom and impacting the world for Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. say much. Daniel, come on up. We're going to let, uh, we'll let Daniel talk about the reality of what it means to be persecuted. Thank you, Seth. I stand here. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. You have seen the documentary on 
India, how the people, the believers in India are suffering uh, for the sake of Christ. Because uh, India is under the Hindu militant attacks. The Hindus are major and uh, they are 97% are Hindus and Muslims in the country. Only 3% are Christians out of 1.3 billion people. 29 states having all over India the same problem, same kind of suffering. They have been killing our people and uh, demolishing our churches, reconverting our buildings into Hindu temples. Because of our Prime Minister, who is a very strong Hindu, he has been supporting his groups, militant groups, to destroy Christian community. So they are thinking to wipe out Christianity by 2022. That was his dream. But we as Christians, believing in God that he is, he is able to take care and save his people, even though many people are sacrificing their lives to die for Christ, because they think that it is God who allowed us to die for his sake. We are not afraid to give our lives for the service of God. So our ambition is only these two words, service or sacrifice. You have to serve the Lord as long as you live in this world. If you are not able to, you, you didn't get a chance to survive, then give your life for the sake of the gospel. Because the historian Justin Martyr said like this, a blood of a martyr is the seed of the church. That's we strongly believe that God is going to raise up a stronger church than what we have. I think God is moving in the land of India. Even though it is says that only 3% Christians, but there will be more, maybe up to 7 or 8% Christians throughout the whole country. And so we have been under this, this threat. Please pray for us. I live in India. I don't live in this country. I just came on the first of this month and I'll be back on 21st of this month going back. So please pray for me. My ministry is in India. My call and my life is in India. So I want you to uphold me in your prayers. The Lord blessed our ministry for all these 40 years of my life. He has given us 525 churches that I was able to establish through Christian Faith Ministries, the ministry that was started by me in 1976. Ever since preaching the gospel and training up the young people and sending them to the unreached India. Because India is still, there are many places they never heard even once in their lifetime about the name of Jesus. That's my vision and my care to reach this nation before he returns back to this earth. So that's why even though we have much enmity and opposition and oppression, but we are not, you know, afraid of those things. We wanted to carry the gospel of Jesus to reach the unreached India. I want you to join your hands with me. Pray for India because we as Christians, we need to love those who are going to perish in eternity in hell. So let us take it as our responsibility also. We are helping the community. We have an orphanage. We have 50 children in our orphan orphanage and taking care of them, providing everything. And also I have started a Christian school that is KZ2 high school. We have 324 children this year in the school. There are 24 st uh, staff working for them. And... Uh, um, there are other ministries that I have been involved. I am a pastor of a church in the city of Visakhapatnam on the east coast of India with 2.5 million people in the city. 
So my church is a little, little bigger than yours, maybe 500 people. And uh, so I'm pastoring in that. My son is also pastoring. I have four children and five grandkids. And so sixth one is on January 7th. Hopefully, I'm going to see my sixth grandchild, maybe a boy or a girl. Yesterday, we went to Walmart to buy some clothes to the newborn baby. Without knowing how can I buy, is it the girl or a boy? <laughs> and we got so much difficulty to find out. So Becky came with me. What do you think? Maybe you take in between boy or a girl. So I don't know what to say, but we bought something, uh, whatever it is. So it can be used temporarily. And uh, so please uh, pray for my, I have two daughters and two sons. They are all in the ministry, but only my daughter. Daughters are not in the ministry. She is a doctor, a gynecologist. Uh, she is the one who is going to have a baby. And the second daughter is uh, a pastor's son's wife, but uh, he is a farmer. He is raising chicken. He has like 20, uh, 25,000 chicken in his use. He has a big industry. So they are in that ministry. And my sons are taking care of the churches. And so please uh, pray for those. My wife is in Vishakapatnam taking care of the church where I am pastoring. So I am going back within a week. So I want you to pray. And if you are interested to support our ministry, you are most welcome. You can support our ministry through your church so that it will be beneficial to have your tax exemption. And also, if you wanted to personally involve, like a teachers, doctors, or any helpmates, you can come to India and work with us and through us and uh, help those people. And thank you, Pastor, for giving me this opportunity and my friend Bill, who brought me here, introduced you. And uh, this past week, I stayed with Pat and Becky's house. They are so nice people. Well taken care of me and I was blessed by being with them. And thank you uh, for giving me this opportunity. I would like to encourage you this morning. I don't know how much time I have. 11? I have to close? Wherever? Whatever. In India, uh, my service is 9.30 to 12.30. <laughs> Three hours. I preach long sermons in India. So... This is America, so I don't want to be <laughs> ignorant of your time. So I can see the time is there. Is it correct time? Is it 1040? Yeah, I think it is. Okay. And I would like to encourage you uh, from the word of God, book of Daniel. Would you please turn your Bibles from book of Daniel, uh, chapter 1. It's a long passage. You don't have to read it, just, uh, uh, just to see how it is. 8 to 19 passes. It tells about four young people from Hebrew nation. They were taken captives into the kingdom of Babylon. But they were righteous and holy people. And they wanted, they decided not to defile themselves with the things that are there in Babylon. So... We read how they escaped uh, from that uh, defilement of eating king's food and drinks that were contaminated, polluted from the idol worship. And so here we see out of this passage from 8 to 19, we read about Daniel. He was thinking about himself. We are worshipping a supreme God, a holy God. How can we eat this king's food, which is highly defiled with the blood of goats, maybe bulls, maybe something else, which was offered to their gods. It is abomination to us to eat that kind of food. So, out of this passage, I wanted to present three thoughts that God gave me while I am reading. So the first one, he was thinking about himself. Since I am from a holy nation of Israel, 
I don't want to mingle with the worldliness of this world. So he has a passion of his own life. This is what we have to understand this morning. The passion of your life. Do you have a strong desire of what you are? How can you save yourself? How can you live yourself? How can you worship God? How can you be a blessing to others, those who are unreached in this community? Do you think that America is a Christian country? 225 million people in this country, but they are all not Christians. Maybe half of the population are non-Christians. And there are many more unreached in this country itself. I am telling about my country, but your country is also getting close to that picture. They are more unreached. Many young people are going away from the Lord. Many churches are empty. Why? Because they don't want to come to the church. People are so busy. They are just busy with so many other things. They have so much recreation. They have to go to the casinos are here. People are going to the casinos to make more money. They are going for fishing. They are going for some football match or something else. And this is all what happening now. Being a Christian, what are you thinking about you? Do you have a love for you? Uh, I'm nothing. My, wife is, my, my, my life is almost over. I don't care about what is happening to me. That's what some people think. You are killing yourself by smoking, drinking, all kinds of that, gambling, and all those things. That is defiling and killing yourself. See, we must be serious about our Christianity because we are not by chance here. It is God's eternal plan that he has brought you here into this holy place because God has given us that privilege to be called his children. Amen. Amen. If you read from 1 John chapter 3 verse 1, it is written how God has given us that privilege to be called his children, which is a great privilege. We are not somebody's children, but we are the supreme God's children. So that is the privilege God has given us that you have to keep up that dignity that God gave you. And we don't want to, you know, just be a common man. We are special in the sight of God. Do you think that you are special even in the sight of God and even in yourself? You are not somebody. You are not nothing. You are great in the eyes of God. And you should be great even in your thinking. I can be used in the hands of God. Even though it is a small stone in the hands of David. But he applied the anointing of God to that small stone. And he, he declared with that great giant Goliath. I am not coming with might and strength. But I am coming in the name of God. And he thrown that stone, that small stone with this big giant. And he was killed because he assumed that he believes that he is the son of God. That we know that we are the children of God. How much passion you have for your children, for your household. Do you pray for them? Do you read Bible for yourself? Do you taking care of yourself to grow? We are not nominal Christians nowadays because we know the world, the whole world is confused. With so many things, earthquakes, burnings, and floods, and hurricanes, wars. You know, the nuclear war is going to take place, uh, take place from uh, North Korea. At any moment, they might attack. Who knows? It's maybe the third world war. Maybe disastrous. Who knows? What you, what you are thinking about you, if things are happening like this, where are you going to spend your eternity? Is it in hell or in heaven? Are you serious about your believing life as a believer, as a Christian? We are not coming to the church just to give our tithes and offerings. We are not coming to the church to show ourselves to somebody. 
you are coming here that you are believing that Christ is here and our God is real and he is speaking to us. Amen. Amen. Yes, Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith it is impossible to please God. Whoever comes to his presence that he believes and you must believe that he is here and taking care of you and reply you, answer your prayers. And he will help you. He will heal you. He will bless you. Because we believe that Christ is here. Where there are three or two or three. Gather in my name. And he promised that he will be among us. Amen. That's what our faith is. Our faith is nothing but believing in Christ that he is alive. You need to have that passion about yourself. That I must be ready to face Jesus. We believe that Christ can come at any time of these days. Every believer is looking for him. What if Christ comes maybe tonight? Do you think that you will go to heaven? Are you ready for that? It's not a joke. When Christ comes, I will ascend. It's not something like singing. It's not something like we are exercising Christianity. As Paul pictured the life of the, the, the readiness of Christian as a believer in Ephesians chapter 5 verses 28 to onwards, we must be blameless. We must be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. There should be no dots in our lives, not wrinkles, no sin, nothing. Some people would say, oh, once in a year, I drink a little bit. Once in a while, I smoke. Once in a while, I just go to the casino to spend some time. Whether it is a small thing or it's a big thing. Sin is sin. Don't take it so casual. Be serious about sin. Even though it is small, if the doctor finds something in your heart, a cancer, it may be a small, is going to spread out and take care of all your body and that will kill you soon. You need to wake up that thing. You need to love yourself. You are so precious. This body is not anymore belongs to you. It belongs to the Lord. Because this body is washed by the blood of Christ and you are baptized and you became his children. We need to keep that passion, the love for yourself. And also the second fold of this message is how much do you love your neighbor? That's what the Lord is going to ask you. Second Corinthians chapter 10, chapter 5 verse 10 it is written. We as believers... All must stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account. Whether you did good or bad with this body. You cannot escape. You might have done in the secret life. You might have done somewhere in a closed room. But God sees everything. God knows everything. So we all must stand before the judgment seat of Christ, give an account. The books will be opened. He will open the books and read, yes, Daniel, what did you do on the day of so-and-so date and -and so-and-so time? This is what you do. God is going to ask your account, what did you do? Did you ever love your neighbor who is dying without Christ? Did you ever visit them? Have you been praying? How much time you are spending for the dying people? A love for the nation. Love for our society. Love for our own generation. You need, you must have a passion to take care of the people because Jesus himself, he commanded us, love your neighbor as yourself. Amen? And the second thought the Lord gave me, when you have a passion and love for yourself, 
and that's why he is calling you. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4, 5, verse 6, when he, God appeared, when God appeared to Jeremiah, he said, I have called you even before your formation in your mother's womb. I set you apart. See, God's calling is not just Pastor Steve invited you to the church. Even before you come to this airway heights, maybe somewhere in, somewhere in this country, God's plan is there in your life. That's why he brought you all the way to here. In this place. God's calling is sure in every one of our lives. When God called me when I was 18, I was born in a pastor's house. I know my father's sufferings and the problems he faced. I don't want to become a pastor to come to this gospel work. So I would like to go out and find out a job and live a live nice life. But uh, God called me. When he called and spoke to me from Romans chapter 10, 14, 15 verses. How can they hear unless somebody goes and delivers the message? So I have called you to go and preach. So that's my, my main motto of Christian faith ministries. Go or send. I admitted myself. I accepted the call. And I became the servant of God. In 1976, I married my wife and we went to the seminary. We got our theological training. Ever since, we are preaching the gospel, planting churches, raising the young people, going throughout the nation and preaching the gospel. And I love my country. I love my people. I love my whole world. Is my parish to preach the gospel. The Lord gave me the chance to go and preach the gospel and make disciples. Whoever believes in me shall be saved. If they will be saved. If they don't believe, they will perish. If God is going to punish the nation, he will punish us first. Because you neglected your responsibility. You have a responsibility. You must take care of your neighbors, your society, your country. That's why you need to pray for this country of America, the superpower of the whole world. You need to pray for your president, uh, his colleagues, Donald Trump. So many things are happening you may not know because most of you don't watch the news. The news is fake. You don't get the real news. <laughs> so you need to pray for this country that God may establish righteousness again. You, you are called. Do you know that? You are called, no matter what age you are, whether you are young or older, whether you are male or female, God has been calling us. See, when God called, Isaiah began to confess his life. Lord, I am living among the unclean people. I am not worthy to be called your servant. In Isaiah chapter 6, we read, when he saw the vision in heaven and he began to confess his sinfulness. Lord, I am with unclean lips, unclean eyes, unclean thoughts, unclean deeds. Have you ever confessed your life, your failures? You know, you need to confess, Lord, I am a sinner. You, unless you confess your sins and leave them alone, you cannot be saved. You need to be confessing. If you wanted forgiveness, you need to confess your sins. Don't hide anything. Nobody knows about your sins, but God knows. When we come to the presence of God, you have to kneel down with tears and penetrating in your heart. And that is how you have to confess, Lord, without knowing I did all these problems. Forgive me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to come out of this situation. Oh, Lord, help me. Make me once again your child. I wanted to live for you, God. And give me that life again, Lord. Because God has called you to be a witness, to be a blessing, to be a, 
Oh, oh, a great man of God in this world, even in this country. Do you accept that call? When God called me, I was not disobedient. I was not disobedient to the highest call. God gave me this privilege to come to your country, to go to other nations, to preach this gospel. My language is not really good. I have so many blunder mistakes when I preach, but I don't care. I wanted to preach the gospel, that's all. If you are able to understand, that's it. How eloquency I have, I don't need. I speak a simple word that everybody can understand. I am closing with third thought that God gave me. Yes, you have a passion for your life. You have admitted that you are called for, the, for his service to live as a good believer. How can I lead my life? Are you seeking the direction? How to lead? How to go? Where to go? What shall I do? When Isaiah confessed his life and God said, he took out that fire, coal, and he touched his mouth. I have, I have uh, consecrated you. Now you are holy. And then suddenly God said, who will I send? Who will go for me? And here comes this man, admitting himself. Isaiah was not an ordinary man. He was a prince, born in the royal family. Very luxurious life. But he became a servant of God. He wrote such a nice book, 66 chapters, the book of Isaiah. Willingly he laid his life. Lord, here am I. Send me. What a great sacrifice he made. God is looking for somebody. If he wanted to please God, take up his cross and follow him. Don't look to here and there. People need positions, money, big cars, big wealth, big houses. Don't worry about those things. Someday we are going to leave everything here. All the palaces are there, but the people are gone. All the riches are going to perish in this world. Whatever you did for God will come with you to save your life. So that's why in John's Gospel chapter 14, he said in verse 1 and 2, don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. You may not have a own house here. You may not have a good house here. But I have mansion for you. I'm building houses there. <coughs> and my desire is why I'm coming back to take you back with me. Wherever I live, you want, I want you to come and stay with me. The house is for you. I'm preparing for you. What a great privilege. We don't have to pay anything. <laughs> it's all paid. Are you not happy for that? You don't need any social welfare for that. You don't need any payment cutting. It's all paid by God because he loves you. He loves me. That's why he's preparing. You know, I don't have my own house. I have been in the ministry last 42 years. Now this is the 42nd year. I don't have a car. I have a small motorbike. I go by that bike all over, wherever I can. It's 150cc motorbike. It's not big like Harley Davidson. Okay, my house is under the church basement. Under this church basement, there is a house. And so the service will be on the upstairs. We live under the, uh, the basement. I don't care whether my house is a very big, good house or not. I stayed in this country in a beautiful mansions while I'm traveling. But I don't have, I don't care about the houses because my house is better than anybody's house in this world. The house built by, with the hands of God alone. And that's why in Hebrews chapter 12, it is written, verse 1 and 2, looking unto Jesus. We have to look unto him, not to here and there, and his position, what a great race car is running, 
what a big motorbike is going on, what a big house he has. Don't worry about those things, but looking unto Jesus. We need to look unto him, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Gaze on him, concentrate on him, your thoughts and your eyes, your life and everything. Dedicate yourself to the Lord and follow his footsteps. God is going to reward you and he will direct you. How can I go there? What to do? Two years ago, I went to South Korea in November. It was very cold in South Korea that time. I have something like this. Not this one, it's something on the top. So I was shivering like anything wherever I go. It was very cold. Nobody speaks English there. Everybody speaks Korean language. I don't know anything. I need money. I have my card. I went to the bank. They are speaking Korean. What to do? And uh, then finally I got somebody who is speaking very little English. Then I exchanged some money. Then I came out with his help. And I was there for one month almost. I preached in different churches. Only the pastors can speak very little English. So they became my translators. I preached there. Then I come back. I don't care whether they speak my language or not. When I came to the church, this girl asked me, Do you, are you going to preach in your language? I said, if I speak in my language, you don't understand. That's what Paul said. If somebody is speaking in 10,000 words that you are not able to understand, it is in vain. You speak five words that everybody can understand and beneficial. God will give you the direction how to follow him, how to glorify him, how to reach the people. God, I want to talk to this brother. How can I? God will bring you, if you have a passion, if you have a love, if you feel that you are called to do for this service, God will lead you and open the doors for you to step out. May God give you that inspiration. May God give you that love for the people, love for this world, for their salvation. May God bless us. And please continue to pray for India and pray for me as I'm going back. And get involved with the work of God. Improve this church. Build this bigger church. You will have more people. If you have a love for your own people. If you have love for this casino place. You will have more people. The sinners will come and repent. Pray and make the decision. Yes, Lord, today from onwards, I will pray at least 10 minutes per day for the dying souls in casinos, in gambling, in drinking. And make the decision. God is going to honor you. Your sincerity. God is going to honor you. God will bless you. May the, may the Lord bless us through this little encouragement of the word of God. God bless you all. A small prayer. I'm going to close my message. I think it is 11.5. I'm not violating the rules because you are a military man. So... <laughs> Please close your eyes. Our Father in heaven, we thank you and praise you. Even though we were nothing, Lord, we admit ourselves that we are sinners, but you have loved us so much. How much do you have love for us? And you stretched all the way on the cross of Calvary. You shed your blood and you gave your life. This much, son, I love you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, we're giving ourselves to you this morning. Bless this congregation, bless the leadership, the elders, each one of them, Lord, the children. Bless the vision that you have given to the pastor and the people here. Let this church grow bigger and bigger. Let this missionary mind grow bigger and bigger. Reach out the people so that they may have a love and passion for the dying souls so that they can bring them and fill this place with your glory. Bless us together. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor.
So I think we all learned one thing next week's service is three hours. Um, pack a lunch. <laughs> thank, <No. laughs> um, thank you, Daniel. Um, it, as Daniel was speaking towards the end, I was, I was thinking, you know, the United States used to ship out more missionaries uh, to the rest of the world. And it's, it's odd to me that a nation that's 3% Christian under heavy persecution, and I've seen some other videos other than this that are not, you're not, yeah, yeah we're not going to show it on a Sunday. Um, and for us to be encouraged by a pastor coming from the other side of the world to convict us, um, I think it's very telling of the status of where we're at. So I <clears throat> will commit uh, to what Daniel has said. Let us all pray for, for the uh, lost souls uh, in our nation. Let us pray for the saints that are being martyred, that are being persecuted heavily in India and, and around the world. Persecution that uh, we just have no concept of. We read of it in the book of Acts. We read of it in the history books, but it's so foreign to us. But it's reality around the world. Um, Let's, let's begin that prayer now, and then we'll close this service up. Heavenly Father, Lord, ah, what a conviction, God. Ah, we have so many distractions, so many things in this world that uh, we are overindulged with in, in America, God. And, uh, they can be so distracting that we can lose track of the mindset that you place before us that the love that you have, not only for us, but for those who are dying, Lord, and that you have called each of us to this place and time of which we live, Lord, that you have ordained that. And God, I pray that in the midst of, of our lives, that our emphasis and focal point would be on serving you. And in the midst of that, if it requires of us sacrifice, that we would be willing to sacrifice ourselves for the cause of the gospel, Lord, that those who are dying, those who are perishing, Lord, that we would have, take that message of hope and, and take it out to the lost. Lord, that you would embolden us, encourage us, and drive us and motivate us to do that. I thank you for the words from Daniel. And God, it is no mistake, you flew him all the way from the other side of the world to speak to us. Ah, you are truly an amazing God. I pray for his continued ministry. I pray for the pastors there that are uh, being martyred. I pray for the Christians that are being martyred and, and losing everything, that are under intense persecution. I pray for their encouragement that they would continue in the hope of Jesus Christ, understanding that you have promised them an eternity together with you. Father, I admit they will undergo things that I will probably never have to. God, I pray that you would have an impact over there, that you would quiet the opposition, convict them, Lord, that Christianity would spread. Let the truth of the gospel, the hope that is in you, would spread. Lord, that there would be a massive growth of faith and love in Jesus Christ throughout India. Lord, that that would continue and that would happen and that would rather begin here in America. And God... We thank you for your loving kindness. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, if you would like to give to Daniel's uh, ministry, go ahead and put it in that the box that's back there by the soundboard. Um, and Daniel, stick around for a little while. If you have any questions or want to talk to him or, or anything like that, um, he'll, he'll stick around for a while. But I think he is going to be leaving with Bill uh, shortly, probably to get something